The Israeli Defense Force hits 100 targets overnight and missiles from Yemen intercepted by the U.S. Navy. I'm Simon Constable and this is Constable Confidential. Joining us is Ben Weintarp, our special guest. He is a writing fellow at the Middle East Forum and a contributor to the Jerusalem Post and other distinguished publications. Thanks for joining us, Ben. I hope you've been safe. Uh, thanks for having me, Simon. Uh, yes, things are somewhat uh, quiet in Jerusalem right now. Well, that's that's good. They're obviously not quiet in any other places. Can you give us an update on the missiles that are being set, sent from Yemen and also what the uh, IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, has been doing? Um, well, the um, Iranian-backed Houthi movement in Yemen uh, launched missiles that, according to the U.S. military, were aimed in the direction of Israel and were intercepted by the U.S. military. Um, and the the Houthis have been waging, uh, I'm sure many of your listeners know a and viewers, a war against uh, Saudi Arabia and other uh, Arab countries in uh, in Yemen. Um, but also in Saudi Arabia. So this isn't something atypical for the Houthis who have launched missiles at Saudi Arabia's um, oil production plants, as well as um, has been involved in attacking vessels in, in, the, uh, in the Gulf area. But the Houthis are um, a deeply anti-Western, anti-Semitic terrorist movement. Um, and I guess what's disturbing is when President Biden entered office, he lifted the sanctions on the Houthis from the American side. And it just shows you that turned out to be a, um, a, a very bad policy decision, given that the Houthis are unconditionally loyal to the Islamic Republic of Iran, who's brought up, who's helped Hamas bring about this war. I don't, we don't know where this is going yet, whether other missiles will be launched at Israel from pro-Iranian regime militias in Iraq. Um, also, uh, Hezbollah in the north, as I mentioned during our during your last show, has 150,000 missiles aimed at Israel from Lebanon, where the um, Lebanese terrorist movement Hezbollah is based. And then, of course, Hezbollah and Iran are also in Syria. So it's it's all um, a, a highly highly volatile situation right now in the region, but also in the world. There's a lot of rhetoric out there right now that's um, talking about uh, possible World War Three style uh, situation unfolding. Yes, and this is fascinating because we say political leaders are saying, like Joe, Joe Biden and Rishi Sunak and others are saying that they want to stop the spread of any tension across the Middle East so the war doesn't widen. And at the same time, we've got intelligence agencies, MI5, which is a British domestic one, and the FBI, warning that terror could spread to the UK and the US. They sound like to me that they are diametrically opposed to each other. One one of them has got to be wrong or possibly both. What, what do you think of that? What's going on here? Well, the British Prime Minister was in Israel, uh, Sunak, as you, meant, as you mentioned, and um, his remarks were, were well received because he said um, he wants Israel to win. I think that, that those were the words he used. The fact that he talked about Israel winning uh, is different. Uh, is a different type of uh, political rhetoric than we've seen over the last um, 15 years, when Israel's had also a number of largely mini wars with Hamas and Gaza. So there is this politicians like Sunak, to his credit, from the Israeli perspective, have ratcheted up the rhetoric and said, "Now is the time to to defeat Hamas." instead of reverting back to this notion of, well, Israel needs to, Israel will continue to manage the conflict with Hamas in, in the Gaza Strip. Now, the, the spread of the war um, is, is not only possible in, within the, it could uh, bubble over or spill over outside of the region into Europe, into other countries, largely because Iran's regime has all sorts of networks, not only in, in Great Britain, but in France, in Germany, in many European countries, also in the US. You've seen uh, Iranian regime 
um, assassins who have attempted to kill Americans like um, Masi Alinejad. Uh, there was a, a Justice Department indictment of uh, a, an assassin who was commissioned by the regime to murder this very famous Iranian dissident who the regime loathes because she's been able to uh, mobilize women uh, in Iran to oppose the regime. But in, in Germany alone, I just reported um, last week, there are still 1,250 Hezbollah operatives who are not have not been um, detained or uh, arrested. There are 450 Hamas operatives in Germany. This is according to the German uh, intelligence report from the federal government in Germany. Um, why the Germans are allowing these terrorist organizations to have such latitude in their country is uh, a big problem. General Amir Avivi, um, the um, former IDF Brigadier, Brigadier General in Reserve, who was responsible for Gaza, uh, told me that Germany should detain the 450 Hamas uh, operatives. Uh, I wrote about this for the Jerusalem Post and shut down websites there are many in Germany that uh, list pro-Hamas groups or uh, support uh, Hamas link groups with uh, donations and this sort of activity. Britain, I believe, is there's going to be a big uh, pro-Hamas rally in London this weekend that's organized by a whole series of groups in Britain that are um, outspokenly pro-Hamas and have embraced Hamas's ideology and its terrorists. Um, and there'll probably be tens of thousands or uh, at least as masses of people who will, who will be promoting Hamas's ideology in the UK. And what, when, when Israelis, people living in Jerusalem, in Tel Aviv and, and around the, the Israeli territory, when they hear about these, these sort of things happening in Western European countries, what is the thought that goes through your head and your friends' heads? Uh, when when you hear that, it it seems very a, a very jarring thing. Right. I mean, Israel right now, Israelis in the state of Israel, you know, view um, Hamas as um, you know the modern Hitler movement. Or commentators have also compared Hamas with the Islamic State. I think the better comparison, I think I said this last week, is um, <clears throat> the Hitler movement. Um, because of, because of its um, uh, ideology that involves uh, Hamas's Islamist ideology that's animated by um, eliminatory anti-Semitism to not just kill Israelis but to, to uh, wipe out all Jews across the world. So Israelis, to answer your question, are, are obviously uh, you know enormously disappointed, I guess. But there is a sort of a realism here among Israelis that the Europeans, France, Germany, Britain, other West Spain have have engaged in a form of soggy appeasement toward uh, Hamas and Hezbollah over the years. I mean, one just has to remember that the European Union has still not outlawed the entire uh, Hezbollah movement in Europe. It's the, the so-called political wing has been outlawed, excuse me, its military wing has been outlawed, but Hezbollah's political wing has not been outlawed. Hezbollah is, is a unified organization, according to its uh, leadership. So the, you know, there, there's a sense here where uh, Israelis are are hoping, I think, especially counterterrorism experts, that this war will jolt the uh, European political class out of its out of its dogmatic slumber, and they'll wake up and begin to crack down on uh, Islamist ideology and Islamist. Uh, organizations, including organizations that are um, enabling and financially supporting terrorist organizations. Qatar, as I mentioned last week, is a big problem. Right now, what's what's sinking in here is Qatar is Hamas and Hamas is Qatar. Um, so there is that sense. And I've also read reports that there are now, there's a movement to cause uh, companies to divest from Qatar and businesses in the West should not be aiding Qatar because it uh, funded uh, Hamas, those are encouraging signs. And I, I don't know if I mentioned this story about Manchester United last week. Uh, this past week, the Manchester Evening News uh, reported on my article in Iran International about Qatar's former 
foreign minister who's been a big promoter of and sponsor of Hamas that my article after it exposed HBJ, that's the acronym for the uh, former Qatari foreign minister and his son, Sheikh Yassin, um, the article said that one factor in, in Qatar losing its bid, HBJ and his son, for the uh, British soccer t- or football team, excuse me, Manchester United, was the anti-Semitism of HBJ. So that story just broke within the last week, and the Manchester United attributed my story to a, a possible reason why Qatar withdrew its bid. And the American family that owns the soccer team is an American Jewish family. So they might have been sensitive to these concerns, given what's unfolding um, in Qatar. I just wanted to add one uh, in in Gaza. And of course, with Qatar, I just wanted to add one more point about your question, which is is quite, it captures a lot of points. The In, in Israel right now, there's an attempt to shut down Al Jazeera, which is a Qatari-owned uh, media organization because yeah and, uh, and just, to, just, to, just to clarify that there are, there are three versions of Al Jazeera there's Al Jazeera Arabic Al Jazeera English and they used to be Al Jazeera America which I think now is completely kaput but there are still two versions left so which I think produced completely different contents but do carry on right you know it's sort of a, a spin-off of your question when you ask well how can Europe tolerate um <clears throat> and so many uh, pro Hamas movements and uh, and organizations on its within its territory. The same question right now is being asked about Al Jazeera in Israel, which is a Qatari regime own uh, outlet that employs mainly, to my knowledge, all Israeli Arabs. But the Mossad, Israeli's foreign intelligence service, has urged the Israeli government to shut down this media network because Al Jazeera is assisting Hamas by providing military locations to Hamas. And also, uh, Al Jazeera has celebrated the uh, terrorism attack that has murdered, that murdered 1,400 people on October 7th, and also the abduction of over 200 hostages and um, thousands of, of, of injuries. So there, this, this is all documented. It's open source information on the website of the Middle East Media Research Institute. If folks want to verify the remarks from Qatari reporters, excuse me, Al Jazeera reporters, who are cheerleaders right now for Hamas. Uh, And the question is, will Israel shut down this network? The foreign ministry told me yesterday that it's being, the the order to close down the network is being reviewed, but it's now the 14th day into the war and many uh, counterterrorism experts are also baffled and perplexed that the network uh, hasn't been shut down. Well, we shall see what happens on that. And we'll be counting on you to keep looking and watching what happens with Al Jazeera. Now, one of the things that you've mentioned, Iran a number of times, because Iran seems to back a lot of terror groups or, or designated terror groups across the, the Middle East. It's also recently officially declared war on Israel. That won't be a shock to anyone in Israel, but how do you think that makes a difference or does it make a difference to anyone in the West to hear that from Iran? Right. Uh, I mean, the the Iranian foreign minister announced uh, on state TV in Iran on Monday, I'm quoting him, leaders of the resistance will not allow the Zionist regime to take any action in Gaza. The resistance front is capable of waging a long term war with the enemy Israel in the coming hours. We can expect preemptive action by the resistance front. That was on Monday. So what's happened since then? is there's been some uh, clashes in the north with Hezbollah, but it hasn't broken out. In, it hasn't um, unfolded into a, a full-scale war. And Iran is basically thus far using its proxies, and its MO is to let other uh, Arab country, Arabs get killed for its war aims. That is, both Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon. Um, Whether Iran gets directly involved uh, is still an open question. The U.S. um, has warned Iran with its uh, military show of force in the Mediterranean. um, And that's two two carrier that's two carrier strike groups, right? That's it's both the two massive aircraft carriers plus the support vessels for that, including destroyers, which are basically missile ships, 
and then Britain has sent a detachment as well, including Royal Marines. And I understand now the SAS, the Special Air Service, are being brought in to help rescue hostages. Is, is that your understanding as well? Yeah, that is my understanding. Um, you know, and I, 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 because there may be British hostages, uh, or there are, as I understand it, British hostages in the Gaza Strip, there are all different nationalities among the 200 plus uh, hostages, including uh, a number of Americans. Um, so I, 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 it seems like it's a prudent strategy to have as many of the elite uh, intelligence services um, engage in this type of mutual cooperation to secure the release of the hostages. I, I tend to think the idea, as I mentioned last week, from Yigal Carmon, former counterterrorism advisor to uh, Yitzhak, Prime Ministers Yitzhak Shamir and Yitzhak Rabin, is not is is a is a sharp idea um, that Israel should release all Palestinian terrorists right now in exchange for the 200 plus uh, hostages in the Gaza Strip. Now, I don't think Hamas will do that, but at least it will show the world that Israel has gone to great lengths to secure the release of the hostages. And we shall see on that front. U.S. visas are now being waived for Israelis who want to stay 90 days. Is there something bigger going on here? Is this basically that America saying, look, you can flee from Israel and come to America permanently, or is it something different? Well, th there's been a, a, a visa waiver process in effect now, uh, negotiations over a, a visa waiver process for Israelis to travel to the U.S. now for um, years. And it, it's, it reached fruition, I think, before the war. And it looks like the U.S. Uh, has now uh, green-lighted it. Um, I mean, it, it, it certainly helps with Israelis who have family members in the U.S. and want to visit them. So I think it's a nice uh, gesture from the Biden administration. Um, I don't think some, it, it really represents an idea that the Biden administration wants to depopulate Israel in any way. It's more of a, a gesture because there's so much uh, contact between Israelis and Americans, but also Israeli Americans who are in the U.S. You know, what... Um, you know, what many folks, some folks in Israel want is uh, um, a sort of a, a depopulation of the Gaza Strip, given what's happened. Uh, obviously, Israel's not going to do that, but they're certainly um, clearing the northern section of the Gaza Strip. And hopefully it'll be turned into some type of, uh, um, as Yigal Carmon wrote the other day in an essay on the memory website, a, a Normandy park or a peace park. Or, you know, there's discussions about a buffer zone being Im implemented in northern Gaza. It's hard to say. They're, they're, the Biden administration warned Israel, as I understand it, against a reoccupation of Gaza. Um, I don't think Israel wants to reoccupy Gaza, but certainly it wants to, uh, you know, root out the terrorist movement at the same time, create a, the Gaza, create a Gaza Strip that's free from rep weapons and terrorism. And that's something that you'll be keeping your eye on all the time and to give us a call as soon as that happens, because we would love to hear what's going on when it happens. Thank you very much, Ben Weinthal, who is in Jerusalem right now. He is a writing fellow at the Middle East Forum and a contributor to the Jerusalem Post and other distinguished publications. Thank you very much. I'm Simon Constable, and that's it.